last piece we wanted to get you here, which connects very much to the midterm conversation. So White House, you know, th- sometimes they'll talk in plain terms about the realities of the economy, but they mostly want to sell their accomplishments. And there's a lot of actual, like, criticism of the media for being too hard on them in terms mm-hmm. of the economy, which, like, looking from my lens, I'm like, these people are almost always consistently your ally. So the idea they've been too hard on you in terms of the economic picture, just it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up in terms of how they've been covering it either. But uh, people are taking note of an interesting Ron Klain retweet. This man speaks often by his likes and his retweets. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. Um, he's retweeting here economist Dean Baker, who said it really takes some gall for the media to tell us that an economy with 3.5 percent unemployment is a disaster. And that was retweeted by White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain. Now, I will grant you it is a strange economy. It is a weird situation when you have unemployment that is so low. There are a plethora. There are a lot of jobs. It just happens to be that a lot of those jobs won't allow you to pay rent and buy food. <laughs> so that's why so many people yep. are telling pollsters that and anybody who will listen, basically, that the economy sucks, that they're struggling, that they're like blowing through their savings, that they can't get a break, that their wages are effectively going down. And, you know, I think it's very revealing when probably the most influential person in the White House is basically continuing to be in denial about the economic hardship that people are facing right now. Right. And all of this actually this entire exchange is really revealing. Put this up there uh, because it actually came from a CNN reporter, Andrew Kaczynski. He tweeted, it's a midterm year and the party in power typically loses seats and people are more concerned right now about crime, inflation, and the economy. Dismissing people's real concerns isn't a way in order to win them over. Dean Baker replied and said, don't jobs count as part of the economy? It really takes gall for the media to tell us an economy is a disaster. But now we have always known, always, that it is not, the unemployment rate is not a perfect reflection of the state of the U.S. economy, mm-hmm. hence why the inflation numbers even exist, just by the way. And the point is, is that if the vast majority of people are having trouble making ends meet, the savings rate is an all-time low and credit card rate is an all-time high, yeah, I would classify that as a disaster. I mean, yeah, it's probably better to have a job than no job in this economy, but that doesn't mean that you're flourishing whenever you do have that job. And by the way, you know, the the Fed, which encouraged by Biden and by the Republicans, by the way, is doing everything they can to make sure that that unemployment number goes up so that you not only have inflation, but also don't have a job. I mean, you have basically every analyst out there saying a a recession is a certainty at this point. Like, Mm -hmm. there's almost no avoiding it. And the Fed continues to go in this direction saying, like, wages are too high, even though wages are not keeping up with inflation, and the unemployment rate is too low. That is their view of things. Like, they are actively trying to make this already bad situation even worse worse, something I'm going to be covering in my monologue is the disastrous Republican plans, which go even further in that direction, have a lot of echoes with the catastrophe that unfolded in the UK. But I just, I get so frustrated too with the idea that, you know, these numbers on the economy of people saying, feeling badly about it and feeling negative about it and feeling like their own situation is deteriorating. Like this is just purely a media creation Mm -hmm. as if people don't have experience in their own lives of what it's like for them going to the grocery store, going to the gas pump, trying to make rent, trying to, you know, one day at some point in their life afford a house when housing affordability has never been more out of reach. These are real issues. And, you know, that's why you are fading in the polls is because you don't really understand that and you don't have any plan, at least not one that you've told the American people about, to help them deal with their very concrete problems. Right. And so what is the White House doing? How exactly did they uh, embrace this Twitter game? Well, uh, our producer James Eagle Eye spotted this. While the White House chief of staff was doing this, it turns out who the White House recently invited. So you'll see here uh, that one Twitter user, Muller, she wrote, who you may know is one of the most cringe accounts that exists, posted a photo of a bunch of resistance liberal accounts that were present at the White House that got themselves sit downs with President Biden doing like a now this interview or whatever. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, because it's now this. I didn't some know other, other than the picture what they yeah, actually and did. Some of these other. Anyway, the point is, is that pictured here are some of the most insufferable people like on all of Twitter. Brooklyn dad yeah, defiant. Brooklyn dad. Horse whisper, all those. Nat sec hobbyist 
Rachel Vinman, whose husband was the uh, whistleblower, I, that's one way to put it, the Midas Touch guys, um, who were, you know, some of the people who tried to cancel Joe Rogan, uh, just some of the worst people online. They and should I really, just keep them at the White House I don't so even, they stop tweeting. Yeah, I personally would love it. Of course, <laughs> while they were there, you know, everyone was blasting it out. And I have no problem with the White House inviting allies. I just think it's very telling that these are the allies they choose to align with right ahead of the election. Who These are exactly, by the way, the ex- accounts which surface these types of attacks against reporters for pointing out the most obvious thing, which is the like, voters say the economy is bad. That's it. The, the best part is that's descriptive. They're not even like, I agree. They're like, well, many voters say the economy is bad. Like, it takes some gall for the voters to think that. So these Listen, are the people who they invited. You could wish reality was otherwise, or you could actually freaking do something about yeah. the reality I wish that a lot we exist in since you have power. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.